It's been a big week for US President Barack Obama. In the week he was supposed to be in Australia, instead he stayed home to nail what was not one but two important benchmarks for his first term as president. Yesterday he announced his nuclear arms deal with Russia and of course he's finally rammed through his massive health care program, a kind of holy grail for Democrat presidents stretching back to Roosevelt. Joining me now to discuss these achievements and how the Obama presidency is tracking, Professor Jeffrey Garrett, the Chief Executive of the US Studies Centre at the Sydney University. Uh, Jeff Garrett, thank you for joining us. First, can you explain to us what these health care reforms will mean for the United States and why they were so contentious in Congress. David, good morning. Uh, the health care really is the biggest social issue in the US. The Obama legislation promises to add more than 30 million of about 40 million Americans who currently don't have access to regular health care to the regular health care roles. It also makes it harder for private insurance companies to uh, keep people out of health care because they have pre-existing conditions. So those are the two big positives. What the critics say is that this is another gargantuan big government program, about a trillion dollars over 10 years, that will add to America's debt and deficit problems. And then I think if you're sitting in Australia, you'd say, well, the, the interesting thing about this is that it's really a government subsidy to a private health care insurance system. It doesn't reform the backbone of American health care. It just adds more government money to it. Well, indeed, the, the fight hasn't finished because 13 states are now preparing legal challenges against this uh, decision in Congress, now approved by the president as well. Is this surprising and, and how likely is a legal challenge going all the way to the Supreme Court? I, I don't think it's surprising at all because we have two real hot button issues in the US on the table here. The first one is states rights versus federal rights and the second one concerns mandates. The Obama legislation tells Americans that they must take private health care insurance and if they don't they'll get fined for that. So the states are saying that that's violating the Constitution. How will those challenges go? I don't know but uh, America's a pretty litigious country and these federalism issues tend to be pretty tough in court. So could it end up in the Supreme Court? Answer yes. How long will it take? Years and not weeks or months. Unbelievable. Look, uh, Barack Obama didn't win a single Republican vote in Congress. Does this show that he is only appealing to his base uh, with, this, with this policy and, and perhaps completely alienating the right? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I think uh, over time this will be a trivia question, which Republicans voted for anything that Obama wanted. So they have a, they have a just say no approach at the moment to the government and the expectation is that that's going to hurt Obama's Democrats in the 2010 congressional elections. But, of course, the big story in those elections at the end of the day is going to be the unemployment rate in the U.S., which is currently at about 10 percent. No one thinks it's coming down anytime soon. So the question for the Democrats is can they prove to voters that they're doing all they can to help average Americans. Health care was supposed to do that, but we're going to move pretty quickly, I think, on to jobs, 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 and the state of the American housing sector. So you don't think those, those mid-term congressional ele elections in November will necessarily just be a referendum on the health care reforms? They'll, they'll have moved on by then to, uh, to the economy? The, the health care obviously is an enormous issue, but if you think about the first two years of Obama, which is what we'll be at by November 2010, you'll have the Obama reaction to the global financial crisis, which was bigger even than the Australian in proportionate terms, plus health care, plus the international agenda in an environment where American debt is, uh, public debt's likely to go from under 50% of GDP before Barack Obama came to power to over 90% after his first term. So Americans are sort of starting to worry about, is this all affordable? Is the country going bankrupt in an environment where not only is the headline unemployment rate 10%, but the number of involuntary underemployed people, this is white collar workers who've had to take part-time jobs essentially, adds the, makes the, the effective unemployment number, you know, sort of something close to 15 per cent. Jeff Garrett, also during the week, in fact, on, on, on Friday in the US, uh, President Obama announced 
that uh, on the phone he and the Russian president, Dmitry Medvedev, had signed, had agreed to cut, uh, deployed nuclear weapons by 30%. Now, I understand this accord imposes a cap uh, of, of, of about 1,500 warheads or 1,550 warheads. How significant is this? I think it's politically very significant because the Obama administration can say with some justification that this is, this is a real move on from where President Bush was. President Bush was having difficult relations with the Russians, mostly because he wanted to put a missile shield into Eastern Europe that the Russians opposed. Uh, President Obama said, I'm not going to concentrate on missile defense, I'm going to concentrate on strategic arms reductions, and this is what you get. But if you take it in slightly broader historical context, this is really a continuation of the post-Cold War agenda. You know, the U.S. and the Soviet Union, as it was, used to have 2,500 or more warheads. They want to modernize and reduce the number of warheads, so now we'll be down to 1,500. That's obviously a long way from a zero nuclear weapons world. And does it put more pressure on uh, the likes of uh, Iran and others to similarly curb their nuclear ambitions? I don't think so. Uh, the the Russia-U.S. story is an old Cold War story. The new nuclear weapons issue concerns these smaller states, typically in Muslim countries, that want to be nuclear powers, either because it uh, you know increases their status on the global stage, or because they want to have the threat of nuclear weapons. And obviously, the other big story this week was about Israel and U.S.-Israel relations. Well, every Israeli politician you talk to says that Iran is an existential threat to the state of Israel, and the U.S. must do something about that. I, I don't think this decision in Russia will have much effect on that question. And just finally, uh, Barack Obama, of course, postponed his visit to Australia uh, during the week. They, they, they've slated in June for uh, a more extensive visit and possibly bringing the family. Do you think that will uh, happen? Hard to uh, look into the crystal ball too much when it comes to presidential um, scheduling, but do you think that is going to happen and will that be a good thing? I think it, it will happen and it will be a good thing. Uh, president Obama has said he wants to be America's first Pacific president. I think uh, Indonesia and Australia were important stops for him. Indonesia not only because of his personal biography having lived there, but also because Indonesia is the largest Muslim majority country in the world. It's had a successful transition to democracy and it's marketizing as an economy. Australia is important because it's a traditional ally and Obama knows that geopolitics and well, geopolitics in the Asia-Pacific is changing and that the U.S. must come up to speed on that. And so being more engaged in the region is very important to him and to his country. All right. Jeff Garrett from the U.S. Study Centre. Thank you. My pleasure, David.